Hey guys, this is John. I hope you're all doing well. Quick announcement before we get into today's climbing the rating ladder video. I have a personal chess website now. It's johnbartholomewchess.com. Link is in the description. And this is something I've been meaning to have for years now. I've always wanted just you know, a basic website where I could put my chess stuff and maybe give some advice to people and whatnot. And now I have it. I'm very proud of this site. It's actually been out for a few weeks now. I wrote a post in the community section here on YouTube and many of you did check it out. But I also know that can be easily missed and a lot of people only watch the videos and whatnot. So I wanted to mention it here. But please do take a look at this. It would mean a lot to me. And I wanted to point you to a couple specific pages that could be useful for you. So if on the website you click on the Start Here button and then go to Chess Improvers, I made a page aggregating all my best chess advice that I've learned over the years as a player, as a coach, as a YouTuber, even making these videos for seven, eight years now. I just wanted a page that I could point you or even a friend of mine or just email someone saying, hey, like this is what I recommend. So take a look at it. Uh, I talk about my best general chess advice. And then further down, I even aggregate it based on rating. So beginner to 1400, 1400 to 2000, and then 2000 plus. It's not overly long, but I think this is actionable feedback. I really sat down and spent several hours thinking about what I specifically would want to know at these different rating levels. So my hope is that you or someone that you want to get into chess, a friend, um, maybe uh, a family member, anyone really, could look at this page and use it as a little roadmap. So go take a gander at that. Also, I've started up a newsletter. It's called the Chess Mindset Newsletter. I've already sent one post out here, but it's primarily chess improvement advice. But there's also some business and life crossovers with, with this chess improvement advice. I'm really excited about this. I actually love writing. I've been writing on Twitter for a number of years. Of course, like short tweets, but also getting into some longer stuff as well. This is completely free to sign up. You just need to put in your first name and your email, that's it, and you'll get on the list. You won't receive uh, my first post, which went out last Friday, it was on building confidence and self-belief, but I'll probably make that publicly available somehow. And if you're just joining the list now, you'll get all future posts. So really excited about this. This allows me to get into topics that are not easily discussed via video, Again, because I like to write and I'm thinking about chess and chess improvement all the time. I wanted a way to talk about some of these kind of more meta topics, especially things like dealing with triumphs and set, setbacks, how to think about your chess rating, things like that. And now you can get that straight to your inbox. Final thing I'll mention, if you're interested in my upcoming Queen A5 Scandi course, which I am working on, it's still a little ways from release, but there is a wait list for that. If you want to be one of the first ones to know about that course, I'm going to drop the uh, announcement to everyone on this list first. They are going to be the absolute first people to know about when it's released. So, of course, that's also free to sign up. So, yeah, thank you for considering this website and considering going and taking a look at it. Again, it would really mean a lot to me if you did. There's many other pages, but... Take a look at the Chess Improvers, Chess Mindset Newsletter, and perhaps even the Scandi course list as well. All right, thanks, guys. Let's get into climbing the rating ladder. Hey, guys, this is John. Welcome to another climbing the rating ladder video. I'm playing Hamza 563. They open with E4. Let's play E5. I don't often play double king pawn. It's been a while. I can't even think of the last time I played it on my channel. Let's go for it. I know a lot of you are double king pawn players. Okay, bishop c4. I'm a little surprised this player 2179 playing that move because this is known to give black at least equality. Okay, but they're playing this in gambit fashion. This is like a reverse Stafford gambit situation. Very interesting. Okay, uh, I could take the knight on c3. I could also try to play it safe and retreat. I'm kind of leaning towards the retreat to d6 or f6. Let's go to d6. I don't want to 
waste too much time here. This is a 10-0 game. No increment whatsoever. So let's just get the pieces out. I think I can make an attempt to defend this pawn if I want. But bishop f6, d4. Mm, that's not looking too hot. So I'd hate to play f6 here. I just think... Under the circumstances, I didn't uh, take the knight on c3. I'm probably not going to want to do it here. So let's just castle and give the pawn back. In a longer game, this is something I would think twice about because I could probably do better. But I think I got to keep it simple here. I feel like I'm playing the black side of a Berlin now. So, all right, b6, bishop b7 comes to mind. Bishop f6, knight e8 is often a move looking to get the d-pawn going. Lots and lots of possible ideas. Leaning towards b6 in this position, it does allow knight d5 is the only thing, but I don't think that's greatly going to push me off this move per se. I'd also throw in bishop f6 first, and then b6. Let's just play b6 to start. I did look at this, but bishop b7 comes with a gain of time against the queen. I don't see any tactical issues here, so I think it's fine. All right, white plays d3. Yeah, and I wonder if knight d5 is coming next. And if I should even care about that, or if I should just go ahead and play bishop e7. Bishop f6, bishop e7. Yeah, also possible. Although I think, I think knight d5 can come regardless, so I'll just complete the fianchetto on the queen side. Yeah, and I hope you're all doing well. Been a hot minute since I recorded. Spring is here. It is April 2nd. Back in the saddle. Climbing the rating ladder never stops. You know, we're never actually interested in the true destination. You know, it's about the journey. Okay, so bishop f6, knight takes, queen takes. I like that because I connect my rooks. The rook is a little annoyingly posted, but I think I can go knight f5. That should be fine. So let's go ahead and play this. We'll give white the option of getting the bishop pair if they want. But I do believe I have some compelling counterplay. I have all my pieces practically in the game. One of the rooks can come over to e8 pretty quickly. I'm not that concerned about white's bishop pair here. Okay, rook h5. White playing this ambitiously. All right. So the rook is taking a good look around there. Maybe I start with rook e8 and just see how white reacts. Not in a hurry to play g6, I don't think, because that does weaken my dark squares. So, yeah, let's play rook, rook e8. That's going to check white's ambitions. You can't play queen g4, for instance, because of rook e1 checkmate. How's my capture going? I always look over here at my screen capture because I'm paranoid that uh, I'm just talking and the video is not rolling. That has happened to every content creator at some point. <laughs> I don't want it to happen to me again. It's happened in the past. So I kind of suspect... This position is either equal, or maybe white could get a small advantage if they play it correctly. Yeah, like c3 seems logical. A slim advantage perhaps for white, but I am optimistic about my chances of making this a completely equal game somehow. It's just this knight on d5 is, is a bit annoying. I'm even thinking about taking it just to get rid of it. If I play bishop e5, there's d4. Could play bishop e7, maybe, but I feel like that is a bit of a cowardly move. I don't know if there's anything that wrong with g6, but I just prefer to avoid this move. Take, take, rook h3 or something. <clears throat> bishop takes d5, and then c6, let's say. Maybe they adjust the bishop to f3. Can I do anything there? The rook could be a little bit off sides in such a case. It's interesting. Yeah, I was mostly thinking about keeping this light square bishop, but maybe there's some merit to trading it. What about rook e5? Rook e5 catches my eye now. Not sure I'm threatening much because the rook is defended. Bishop takes, doesn't do much. Yeah, probably white can just play bishop f4. Yeah, I'm kind of torn here. I'm going to take the knight. I'm going to have to give up one of the bishops, so I'm sick of that knight just sitting there. Let's just get rid of it. Now I'm behind on the clock. I need to speed up. Let's play c6. And ideally, my knight would get out of the way so I can play d5 and block this bishop. 
So I'm going to look to try to do that soon. Maybe G6 now. That move looks more palatable at this point. Also supports knight f5 in some cases. Yeah. Let's go here. I don't think bishop takes f7 should work out for white. I am trying to be cognizant of some sharper ideas here from the white side, though. Okay, how about knight f5 at this point? Could provoke some sort of reaction from white, like g4. Looks like an overextension to me. I don't know, though, with uh, engine evaluations these days, maybe Stockfish would like a move like g4. That is not at all an insinuation to my opponent, by the way, because I know some of you are going to think that immediately. <laughs> you got to be careful what you say on the internet and in uh, the chess climate these days. But analyzing with engines has just really reinforced how often they like these seemingly random flank pawn pushes, these extravagant pawn moves, even at the cost of development. So, okay, bishop d2, pretty modest. Looks pretty good, I'd say. Yeah, I'm really thinking about this d5 move now. I think I'm going to almost have to play this move soon anyways, so let's just do it. Block the bishop. So white has gone through some contortions in order to gain the bishop pair, especially with this rook. This is the piece that arguably is offsides now. But the bishop pair is the bishop pair. I, I recognize that that is oftentimes worth fighting for. Now I'm not feeling that much worse, if at all, here. So my coordination is great. In a perfect world, I think maybe I could get queen e7, queen e2 in. The knight on f5 is irritating for white. Okay, queen g4. White stays aggressive. So h5 would be a blunder because of rook takes h5, I think. I could fianchetto my knight with knight g7 if I want, but what's the point? I think I'd rather play a coordinating move here, something like queen d6 maybe, and just let white's rook come over to e1 if they want. Could also look for a triple, maybe rook e6, queen e7, something along those lines. Actually, rook e6 looks pretty good. I'm not that scared of threats towards my king. I don't see anything... White can set up in that regard. They can't get over to the H file. I'm going to play rookie six, I think. Do I care about D C4? Nah, C4 is not going to work. Let's play rookie six. Tentative plan of tripling on the E file. This looks like a, a nice reinforcing move, too. Helps support F6 and C6. I do have a weak pawn on the C6 square. I'm trying to remember to pause and breathe and digest my own thoughts in these videos because when the game gets going, it's just rapid fire talking. <laughs> and you guys have known for the past year, I've had some, some voice issues. And I'm not going to blame hour long climbing the rating ladder videos, but it's a good reminder for me just to gather myself, take my time in organizing my thoughts. I can still keep up with what's happening on the board. And I think it's, it's good pacing for you guys, too. Not only in listening to me, but as a reminder in your own games. Because oftentimes we get so caught up, there's such a whirlwind of ideas going on in our head in the course of a chess game that we can overstep and easily miss the mark in doing so. Okay, bishop c2. So to me, white's telegraphing the pass with that one. They're trying to go d4, which is fine. Now, I don't know if I want to play d4 myself because then the bishop pops back. I think I'll more or less allow white to play d4 and probably continue with my plan. Maybe d4, queen e7. Can I throw in rook e8? Very unusual battery back rank threat there, but that would be a mate threat. That would be a mate threat. Well, let's play queen e7. Let's ask the question to my opponent and just play my intended move. Because I got a triple up on the only open file in the position coming. I've already got a double up, but now we can triple up. It's not an Alakine's gun note, because the Alakine's gun is with the two rooks in front and the queen behind. I don't know what you call this one with the queen in the middle. I feel like it should have a name. Uh, Bartholomew's water pistol? Nah, that doesn't sound good. And I'm sure I can't claim this name anyways. <laughs> All right, D4. 
Rookie eight. Really tempted to play this move. I don't see an issue with it. Again, it's highly unusual to threaten this the way I'm setting it up, but I think White's going to have to play something like King F1 or G3. This is a threat, obviously, so I need to respect that. I mean, maybe Rookie 2 is a move, too. Hit this Bishop. It certainly merits some consideration. <clears throat> So rookie eight, bishop takes f5, rookie one, rook takes e1, yeah, I'm mating there. Okay, I'm going to play it. I want to see how white reacts. I can pivot this knight back to c4 and then into e4 later. So tempting just to do this, though. Rookie two, however, might have been a good move, too. That actually looked pretty darn tempting. Again, longer time control, I probably would have thought about that. Probably would have thought about that more. But I think some, some stuff can still happen favorably here. But I got to be cognizant of the fact that we're playing a 3-0 game. Or I'm playing a 3-0 game versus my opponent's 5-0. There's no increment here. And when time gets low, I generally prefer coordinating moves when possible. Moves that keep, thing, moves that keep the position uh, nice and compact. Including all the pieces and keeping pieces on safe squares when you can. Okay, so let's imagine white plays king f1. I think I will play rook e2 at that point. Bishop takes f5, rook takes d2. Or king f1, rook e2, rook d1 runs into rook takes d2 with the deflection. And I'm trying to get down towards e1. Yeah, this looks good. I think white might have to play some sort of defensive move like queen d1 to aid in defending the e1 square, just kind of tighten things up. But that's a hard move to play, because white has to admit that their initiative on the king side probably isn't going to amount to anything. I think I'll just play knight d6 against that, maybe try to work into one of these squares. I think I should be a little bit better there. King f1. Okay, so challenging move. Do I continue with rook e2 as planned? I'm looking at it. I don't see anything wrong with it. Rook Rookie two, bishop takes f5, rook takes d2. There is rookie three, though, I'm seeing now. Rookie three. Okay, so maybe I'm better off just playing the knight d6 move. Especially because this is still pretty nice. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this. Let's play knight d6. <clears throat> Let's get out of this bishop takes f5 threat once and for all. Flirt with this idea, also this one. There's firepower coming towards my king, but... Because I've got these pawns on light squares blocking white's initiative, especially towards the h7 point, I think I'm good here. Bishop d3. Okay, so knight e4. Knight c4, c5, all candidate moves. Knight c4 somehow looks a little premature. I like the look of knight e4, though. Yeah, let's centralize. This does block my rook, but it seems correct. I think maybe c5 was another good option. But 2 minutes, 20 seconds. We can't... We can't delay here our decision making. Maybe bishop g7, f5 under some circumstances. I could definitely see white playing bishop e1, although bishop e1 might run into knight g5. Unleash the triple up and threaten knight takes h3 so that is a possible idea bishop e3 maybe could be played i think i'm getting a little something here white does play bishop e3 yeah knight takes f2 doesn't quite work bishop takes f2 i don't see anything there knight g5 <clears throat> Yeah, very much focusing on these breakthroughs. Knight g5, they can't take, but they could just move the rook. And I'm not seeing what I'm doing there. Knight g3, rook g3. Yeah, I'm going to go for this c5 move. I'm going to try to open a second front. I'm going to try to cause some problems, maybe with c4. I think this move probably was better before my knight went to e4. But it looks pretty tempting still. Maybe I can attack that b2 pawn along the file, like a queen b7 move at some point. 
I'm trying to argue to White that their queen and their rook on the king side are potentially off sides if the battle shifts. Okay, rook d1. I think I'm just going to take this. Ooh, does this work now? Bishop takes d4. Bishop takes, I have knight d2, and then the rook crashes in. Bishop takes d4. I think this is a workable idea. It's a nice flashy move, too. I like the look of it. And when you like the look of a move and you don't see a refutation in a low time situation, that's pretty crucial. I take with the rook. I think I'm going to go with that. Let's do it. Nice move if it works. Probably a game winner if this works. Maybe they can bail out into some, at best, pawn down rook ending, but I don't even have to trade everything necessarily. Like take, take. We have three. Yeah, it's going to be miserable for them. So this is the plan. And I think we're just winning here. Oh, they have, oh my. Ah, but do I have this one? Wait a second. I miscalculated. King G1, Rook E1, there's Bishop F1, but I can take with the Knight then. I did not calculate this. I should have. I also have Knight E2. Okay, I think I'm winning. I just need to stay calm here. Knight d2, king g1, rook e1, bishop f1, absolutely forced. Knight takes f1. Realistically, how was white going to escape from that? Rook e3? No. Maybe the... Oh, man, that might work. Whoa. Well, I got to try this. I got to try it. Let's pre move. Oh my. This is weird. No, no, I take. Ah, yeah, yeah. This should work because the knight covers the e3 square. I think I take. Now they have flashy stuff like this, and I can't take because of queen h3, but I think I'm getting there first. I did not calculate this, though. I should have. Well done if you saw this at home. John did not do his full, food, full due diligence there. But unless I'm really missing something now. I think this should win. <laughs> Threat is... Oh, this one. Oh, but I just take and win the queen. Yeah, let's take and win the queen. There's no time to waste here. I'm going to be up a piece in the end. We're up a piece. Now I got to beat the clock, though. This is still not over. Uh, White well, took on d4 so confidently. Maybe do some pre-moving if I can. Mm, let's try to cut them off here a little bit. Take this. Check. Go take this. Pre-move this if I can. And now I got to push, 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 and hope for the best. Man, my pre-move skills, I don't know about this. I don't know. I'm trying to hunt down these pawns, first of all. Oh, man. I just dropped that. I can't believe that I just dropped that. I'm completely panicking. <laughs> now I'm going to lose. I totally panicked. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Those of you who say, I never lose in climbing the rating ladder, you just found out what happens. <laughs> Let's tell my opponent, GG. <laughs> that was a nice uh, surprise by them with the whole Bishop F1 thing. Okay, I played this time scramble so poorly. I mean, I wasn't even paying attention to them t taking my rook. I probably should have just taken the pawn. <laughs> they said amazing in chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just frankly didn't believe that this would uh, be worth calculating much further. However, bishop f1 is not actually that easy. 
It's not actually that easy because the queen defends the rook. Okay, I am, I am winning as it turned out, but 22 seconds? That was not good technique on my part, <laughs> clearly. Okay, it's better to be a high 2,500 than a low 2,600, though. <laughs> as you guys well know. Well, I think up until that point, I'm pretty happy with my decision making. Bishop takes d4 does look good. I'm trying to think. Yeah, there was a couple moves back, like c5. This is arguably a better moment to play this move before white's bishop even hits the e3 square. But I am pretty happy, all things considered, with my play, aside from the time scramble. Yeah, I think this move should be a killer, because as I was saying with bishop takes e4, there's rook takes e4. Hits the queen with tempo, and that's going to be crashing through. Bishop takes e3 on the next move. Again, at best, I think white's defending a really tough pawn down heavy piece ending there. So we'll check the opening. I'm kind of curious. Like, this is an interesting approach. Um, I know Morphe like to play this way. It's like sort of a Stafford in reverse. I know there are some lines where you can do something like this and try to stop knight g5 and defend. I know f6 looks like a really bad idea. I'm not sure it's the best in this exact situation. But if white plays knight, knight h4, you can play g6 and stop queen h5. So there are some ideas like that. Yeah, we'll check if this solution I came up with here, b6, bishop, b7, was the best. Maybe simpler to play c6 or knight e8. Again, this looks a lot like um, a Berlin defense. There's a line of the Berlin super similar to this, where black often plays those sort of maneuvers to keep a piece out of d5 and try to play the d-pawn forward eventually. So let's take a look. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> you don't like to see that graph when you're playing black in such a game. Like, uh, it's trending in your favor. Now, white's advantage is completely non-existent. Black is just filling the entire bar, and then it spikes up towards the end. <laughs> Clearly, I got to get better at my time scrambling. Um, okay. Whoops. Let's turn off this, turn off this for now yeah so double king pawn opening and then four knights defense and the major moves here for white are bishop b5 because this avoids the whole knight takes e4 thing and also white can go for these g3 systems like the gleck i know daniel narditsky plays this quite a lot in fact i'm not sure if this is the best move order for it but i do see people playing this way with uh, the four knights or also of course you can play d4 you can do this and transpose into a four knight scotch and just to get myself up to speed let's actually see what the most popular moves are yeah bishop b5 d4 g3 so that's why i was surprised white played bishop c4 because this is kind of known this is the center fork trick this is known to be fine for black you can see the statistics are great for black actually i mean this is far better oh let me adjust my webcam here <clears throat> yeah, so if you guys miss this right here, bishop b5, d4, g3, those are the most popular moves. a3, kind of a waiting move, useful waiting move. Actually trying to get black to play bishop c5 so white can take. Those are all possibilities. Uh, but bishop c4, again, this has been known for a long time that this is not so great because knight takes e4, d5, black's going to get the material back. There's lines like this. I know I've had in some games where black can go queen d5 or queen g5 is also good. There's also a knight takes e4, bishop takes f7. This might at first look good, but these situations are phenomenal for black. The engine is really going to like this if we turn it on. Despite the cosmetic discomfort to the king, black's threatening e4. Black can also play h6 and kick this knight away. Black has the two bishops, dominant center. It's no wonder that black should be a lot better here. This is pretty superficial for white if they go down this path. But okay, castles. This, again, is somewhat of an older idea. If you look into some old Morphe games, he played in a similar way. So it looks like the critical thing to do is takes, d takes. Again, Stafford Gambit idea, trying to open the dark square bishop. 
an h6 or f6 so two moves designed to stop something from coming to g5 especially a white knight what if bishop e7 bishop e7 queen d5 castles and then knight takes e5 okay and white can get the pawn back so i did allude to this that i probably need to play something that outwardly looks a little defensive in order to keep the pawn since white played this so quickly and it was a 10 minute game i didn't quite feel like going down that path so i just opted to play knight d6 probably knight f6 in in light of what happened also a pretty good option that stays out of the whole problems with the d6 pawn but knight d6 i hit the bishop bishop b3 and bishop e7 gets the dubious mark Although we know chess.com sometimes has a hair trigger with these um, marks here. Because bishop e7 is looking fine. Knight f5, another option apparently. But bishop e7, okay, castles. Knight takes. Interesting that it says white can gambit upon here, d4. But this all looked pretty logical. Yeah, and b6 is not a huge fan of. Not a major shift in the evaluation, but enough to be noticeable. Hmm. <clears throat> Let's see how I could play this better. A5 is a little hard to appreciate. I don't think I'd play that one. Bishop F6 looks probably like the most normal move. How to unwind from here. Still wants this A5, but yeah, Knight F5 and just go for D6 or maybe Knight D4. Knight D4 is not a thing I thought about. Ah, uh, but that makes some sense because. Knight d4 with the bishop on f6. I do stop white from playing d4. So that does make sense now that I look at it. Okay, yeah, that seems much more straightforward. Knight d5. I can try to keep this bishop. I can also go here. Take this under observation. Maybe kick their knight. Okay, that seems reasonable. That seems reasonable. So b6... Here, knight d5, bishop f6. Yeah. Probably spent a little too long right around here, like this, the next few moves, figuring out what to do about this knight on d5. I actually think ultimately the solution I came up with, bishop takes d5, is not bad at all. I was a little hesitant to play this g6 move. I didn't quite like the dark square weaknesses here that were occurring with this. But okay, I played bishop takes d5, and then c6, and now g6. So having retained the dark square bishop, I'm more comfortable playing g6 now when white can't take this. And building pawns on light squares opposite the bishop that I don't own is a pretty good strategy overall. Yeah, rook h3, knight f5. This all made sense. So I was speculating on g4. To me, in the game, this seemed like it could be an overreach, something like this. And the rook is looking kind of weird, but I'm not sure the engine agrees with that. It says this might actually be fine. I could also play here, Fianchetto the knight. Maybe get it into the game like this, or play bishop g5 or something in the future, or d5. d5. I think g4 is one of those moves, if you can't play f4 or a future h4 along with it, it could be looking a little weird and weakening. But under the present circumstances, uh, it's probably okay because I'm not super aggressively placed to take advantage of the weaknesses. And, and white can play f4 too for what it's worth. So bishop d2, I played d5. So at this point, I was starting to feel pretty, pretty good about my position. Queen g4, rook e6, yeah. And bishop c2. I wasn't that scared of this whole d4 thing. It's suggesting white maybe play rook f1. That's a tough move. Put the rook right behind a pawn that doesn't seem to be going anywhere. It wants to go rook f1, queen e7, and then call a retreat. Queen d1 or bishop d1. That was sort of my feeling in the game that white at some point might have to play this to acknowledge the fact that I can play rook e2 or get the triple up going on the file. I've got some firepower coming down the e file. And the reason white is having a hard time getting anything on the king side is their pawns are not participating. So as controversial as g4 was, usually when you're attacking your opponent's king and they're in a normal castle situation, three pawns or two pawns or whatever, typically you want your pawns to lead and try to do some damage. 
when you're leading with the pieces, that's a tough situation because you kind of have to land a blunt tactic or something to break through. The pawns should be doing the heavy lifting in the attack. So I'm not shocked that the engine is sort of acknowledging here with the evaluation, black being a little better, but also suggesting that white retreat, that white probably doesn't have anything on the king side. But okay, bishop c2, queen e7, yep, d4. And I was getting pretty low here. Yeah, this is, I just can't spend a minute on this move, debating between rook e8 and uh, rook e2. That's probably just way too much time at this moment. I think rook e2 was a good move. Hit the bishop, because if rook d1, I mentioned I have rook takes d2, which should be winning on the spot, because if takes, there's queen e1 mate. Also, if bishop takes f5, I can take here, then take the bishop. I think I should win here as well. King's a little open, but I'm up a piece. Yeah, so that probably was the better moment to play the rook in, because the bishops are aligned here. Looks like white has to do something kind of awkward. Rook d3, maybe not the end of the, end of the world, but now rook e8. This looks like an even better version of the game with their bishop blocked. Still threatening this. So, looks very nice. But I played this right away. Tempting move because of the, the back rank threat. It's just so weird to threaten back rank checkmate like this with the rook, the queen and the rook, the three major pieces bearing down, threatening uh, a three for two exchange that would checkmate the white king. Especially a three for two exchange against two lower value pieces or equal value in the case of a rook versus a rook. But just a weird circumstance. I couldn't resist it. So king f1. Yeah, and then I play knight d6. So it does suggest rook e2 still. What did I not like about this, though? I thought there was something I wasn't sure about. It was this move, rook e3. Ah, I have rook takes f2 here. Yeah, so at this point, I didn't like it because of this. But now in analysis, it's like I, I've seen the hint that the engine says this is great for black, and I almost didn't even need to, um, well, I literally didn't need to know that I have something here, but rook takes f2 check. That's a really nice move. Remove the defender for queen takes e3 check. Yeah. <clears throat> so rook e2 was still pretty good from the looks of it. But I played knight d6. Threatening to come in here. And I think white played pretty okay here. Bishop d3. Hmm. Now it's suggesting h5, knight e4, c5. Knight e4 and c c5. I played knight e4 in the game. Also thought about this. What's the point of h5 allowing rook takes? There's got to be some tactical reason why this is good. Ooh. Bishop e3. Uh, knight e4 now. Yeah, that's pretty hard to appreciate. Wow. And then this. Sim oh my, and then knight f6. So if this, knight f6, rook e1, threatening this. Probably same thing on pawn takes, huh? Okay, absolutely no way I find that, especially in a, a less than three minute situation. But even with a lot of time at backward, knights, backward knight moves, those are some of the hardest moves to find in chess. Yeah, not, almost certainly not happening. h5 baiting. This so you can get some convoluted sequence with a knight f6 fork at the end. No chance. <laughs> okay, knight e4. Again, I don't think this move is all that bad under the circumstances. Bishop e3, c5. White's kind of stabilizing for a moment, though. Yeah, I thought they would take here. I thought they would take, and I was ready to take with the b pawn. Maybe swing over queen b7 to attack this. Maybe rook b8. Maybe c4 under some circumstances, or d4 too. I should mention d4 probably could be a big threat. Because I just look at the white pieces. The major pieces in particular don't seem to have a lot of coordination. Whereas I'm really nicely clustered here in the center. Very well centralized. So I think if the board opens up, especially away from the white queen and rook on the king side, that should benefit me. So rook d1. C takes d4, gets the exclam, bishop takes, and yeah, bishop takes was good. Gets the double exclamation. I can't believe I lost a game where I got a double exclamation point. Oh, calamity. <laughs> yeah. 
And I was just pretty shocked that White did this because this looks straight up losing. Okay, knight d2. Chess.com is going a little overboard with this move now. Uh, that's the logical follow-up. However, I will say I did briefly look at this move as well. Oh, but I'm glad I didn't do it. F takes, and they get the F2 square to work with. The king, look at that. King F2, and suddenly White is winning. They control the E2 and E3 squares. There's no mates. Okay, I'm glad I didn't go with knight to G3. But yeah, knight d2 is why we're playing bishop takes d4. So just for the record, it looks like a few different moves for white, but I was thinking something like this. I was thinking like queen f3 here, but I guess queen g5 is even better. Something to try to bail out into a pawn down ending. Queen e2, okay. Yeah, we can consider that. Even if I just trade down though, white's going to be very hard pressed to hold this end game, I think, in practice with the extra pawn for black. Maybe some issues with their king. Maybe, the, maybe white can hold this ending, I don't know. But at absolute minimum, I don't know that I'd go for the rook ending per se, because all rook end games are drawn, as they say. But something like queen e5 at the end, I think this is going to be hard for white with some loose pawns and the slightly weaker king and down a pawn. But bishop takes d4, bishop takes, knight d2 check. And again, rook takes, runs into rook e1 mate. So king, king g1. I was pretty flummoxed, though, at this point that I had missed that this defense was even possible because it looks so preposterous. But I found my way through it. Knight takes f1. Only good move to keep a absolutely decisive advantage. Yep. And... I think initially I was sweating some sort of rook e3 move here, but that move just doesn't work because of knight takes e3. Knight takes e3 with the attack on the queen, picking up a rook in the process. But I thought, in my mind's eye, when bishop takes d4 and this whole sequence surprised me, I thought, oh, my, am I like missing some resource white has here? Who knows? But yeah, white played bishop e3 and then... Looks like I did the right thing. Knight takes e3, check, and take. And then I just have to win up a piece and a pawn with 22 seconds on my clock, but obviously I botched that. <laughs> this is really poor. I mean, I, I play a ton of bullet on Lee Chess. I didn't realize how bad or rusty I am at bullet on chess.com because I think normally I would have won this pretty easily. I don't know what got into me here. The pressure of the moment. Who knows? I, I, I like let my rook hang. You know what it might be? It might be the fact that on Lee Chess, you don't get penalized for pre-moves. But chess.com always takes point one, right? So uh, I don't know if subconsciously I was like, my time is going down. Why is my time going down? I'm, I'm sometimes even pre-moving some of these moves. Whatever. We're not going to make excuses. Um, congrats to my opponent, Hamza563. I think they played pretty good defense there. And yeah, again, surprised that they played bishop takes d4 and allowed that, but they must have seen they have bishop f1. And it's in the moment, 30 seconds, it would be easy to panic here. And I, I very nearly did. I very nearly panicked and gave back all the advantage. But um, as it stands, practically speaking, I had only 20 seconds, 22 seconds to try to convert. So actually those complications in a way somewhat worked out for white. All right, very interesting game. I'm glad I got in some E4, E5. Hope that was instructive to you guys. So if you play the four knights or otherwise, do remember this center fork trick. This is a nice little line to know. Not the end of the world for white, whether they take or even in the case that they do this. But it looks like black's better, especially if they play something principled here or here. And I hope I gave you some food for thought, especially in terms of managing some situations where your opponent has uh, uh, what's normally a long-term advantage. I did mention them having the bishop pair a lot, but I was trying to block it. I was trying to play nice and tight moves, coordinate, use my pawns on light squares to block their bishop, and then seize my counter chances when they came. Okay, good to be back. Thanks for watching, everyone, especially Analysis Gang, if you made it this far. We'll be back again soon with another video. Congrats again to my opponent. Bye, guys.